more to go. Here I've got a preferred servo drive and servo motor. And the IGBT exploded on the servo drive. And I replaced it and we're going to test the new IGBT in a little bit. And here's the old one. It's made by Mitsubishi Electric. Its part number is CM20ND-12H. Take a look at this. Look at that right there. That's a lot of energy to punch out like that and blow a hole in the top of the IGBT. It takes a lot of energy to do that right there. You can see up in here we have one of the IGBTs and over here the other IGBT that short circuited and exploded. Let's fire up this drop. See what she does with that new IGBT. I'm applying 24 volts DC from this external power supply into the drive. This 24 volts DC releases the brake in the servo motor. Let's apply 220 volts AC three phase to RS and T. We have a green power LED turned on right there. The refer uses this program over here to control its operation of the servo drive. Turn on the enable. Now we have power, run, and stop LEDs on. Just go over here. I'm going to click on the zero. Man. There we go. <laughs> that new IGBT is working. All right. <laughs> Good job. Let's get a little bit closer to that and see what's going on. Back here on the heat sink assembly is the new IGBT that I installed. Now it's a bear. <laughs> because what you have to do is you have to solder each of these wires. You have RS and T right here, these three black wires, the brake uh, connection, and the UVW connection, these four wires right here. And then you have to solder each gate emitter wire to its prospective gate emitter connections on the IGBT. <laughs> that takes a while to do that. It's not fun. And if you miswire something, shoo, we, we blow it up again. <laughs> Can you see these LEDs down here? Those indicate the Hall effect feedback from the servo motor are cycling through their Hall effect signals. Now all of the connections to the front panel here, that's homemade. I made those, oh, how long has it been? 2004 I made those? It's a while back. Long time ago. <laughs> long time ago in electronic years. Let's go over to the laptop and we'll look at the Lefert's control program. All right, I'm going to stop the motor. Now we'll home it. it takes a while to get back to home position. The reason it takes a while to get back to the home position is because I had it zeroing for quite a while. Runs fast back to home though. There we go, we're stopped. Let's zero it again. I'll click on the zero 
button. Shaft of the motor is rotating. We'll click stop. Click home. Doesn't take that long to get back to home now since we zeroed and stopped in quite uh, a brief period of time. Zero it again. Let's go over to the front of that motor, watch it moving. Now the plastic shaft cover holds the keyway until we install it in the machine. That way we don't lose the, the keyway of the shaft. That's pretty nice of them to put that on there. Those keyways fall off and get lost. This right here, this IGBT, took that whole system down. <laughs> I'd have hated to be around when that thing exploded. <laughs> let the smoke out. <laughs> All right, we'll let her run for the rest of the day. Make sure that new IGBT holds up. Thank you all for stopping by. Coming over to see what we're fixing. It's a lot of fun when you get to test what you have repaired. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can't, but when you can, it makes for a fun day. <laughs> all right, y'all. We'll see you next time. If you look down here into the firing channels that drive into the gates of the IGBT, you can see here is a new optocoupler, part number TLP250, manufactured by Toshiba. I had to replace that because when this IGBT exploded, it shot back up through the gate scorched open this 33 ohm resistor that I replaced and smashed this optocoupler. The lid was blown off of it. <laughs> so I replaced the 33 ohm resistor and the optocoupler in that firing channel. Also went through the other six firing channels. You can't see all of them. They run back up underneath this ribbon cable over here. But I went into all of the firing channels, six firing channels, looking for bad, open, shorted components and found none. Just this one, luckily, just this one channel was damaged. Well, here is the low side firing channel that was damaged when this IGBT over here shorted. That energy, that current flowed back up through this circuit right here and scorched that 33 ohm resistor right here. Went back into the optocoupler TLP250 and punched its lid off <laughs> and, and destroyed it. <laughs> Shoo. So, whenever you have an IGBT that, uh, that goes bad, that shorts out, go back up into the firing channels and make sure that none of these components are damaged. Now we got really lucky on this. The only thing that was damaged was this 33 ohm resistor. And I've seen some Laferts that come into the shop, they'll have a 15 ohm resistor instead of 33 ohms. So it can be either or. And uh, this part right here was damaged. The optocoupler TLP250, nothing else was damaged aside from those two parts. Now this is the low side firing channel. Just to be complete, let's take a look at the high side. Let me move this out of the way. Here's the high side firing channel. A little bit different from the low side firing channel, but not much. There's a few extra components there, uh, namely these two zeners right here that lift the emitter up from the power supply, this power supply right here for the U channel, lifts it up by two 8.6 volt zeners. So we would have 17.2 volts from here to here. 
We also have the Zener resistor right here, the 1 kilo ohm 2 watt Zener resistor. That sources the positive side of the U channel power supply to the cathode of the Zener right here. But other than that, everything else looks the same. There you go, all. Not too difficult to change out those two parts in the firing channel. The hardest part was changing out that IGBT because all the gate emitter wires, the power wires have to be soldered in, L1, L2, and L3, or uh, RS and T. And the motor wires, UVW, <laughs> the brake wires, all that has to be soldered into this IGBT over here, so that makes it very difficult to work on that drive. Everything about working on that drive is difficult. <laughs> what are you talking about, people? <laughs> this is one of the difficultest drives uh, that we have come into the shop, is this Lafert servo drive. They never come in for an easy fix. It's always something that, uh, that uh, takes a little bit of effort to repair. But luckily, we've been able to repair everyone that comes into the shop. <laughs> okay. Good night, folks. The sun's going down. We got to get back up tomorrow and do it again. <laughs> Good night. We'll see you when the sun comes up.